thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, everyone, good night to our listeners, good night to our viewers, good night to everyone on Instagram. Uh, so the person who's joining us live through the webinar, it is live on Boost. Uh, Instagram page so you can tell your friends to watch it there if they're not able to register and get onto the platform. So thank you for joining us tonight. At the panel tonight we have a, a group of three beautiful I know you were not here. I, I should have figured you were not hear me when I said beautiful and I saw no reaction. Um, <laughs> three beautiful empowered young women who are doing it in their industry. And we have them on tonight to really share their experiences and, and just tell us what, what they've made possible without our sponsors, of course. We have Invest in Lucia. Um, Boost is basically driving this initiative and kudos to them, of course. And our goal sponsor, the Lucia Development Bank. So thank you to them, um, of which I'm a proud employee. Uh, but thanks to the Lucia Development Bank for making this possible. I will allow our, our three panelists to introduce themselves, to give us a bio, just tell us about themselves, and then we'll just jump straight into the question. So we'll start with Jamie, and then we'll go to Natalie, and then Denise. So you can go ahead and introduce yourself, Jamie. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you to Boost and to all the sponsors. I really appreciate the opportunity um, to speak and to share whatever might be useful um, this evening. I am a business and lifestyle migration specialist. Uh, for the last 10 years, I assist executives or business minded people, families to move their business or their lifestyle to the Caribbean, um, you know, and whether that means company formations throughout the Eastern Caribbean or citizenship and residency, um, pet migration schools, you know, I, we make it happen logistically um, and coach them through the process to live the life they actually want to live on the island. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you. All right, great. It's an honor to have you now. Uh, so yes, uh, Natalie, so tell me about yourself. Good evening, everyone, and thank you again for considering me and for having me on this platform. I am actually the owner of the Knott's Box Virgin Hair Project, soon to be Knott's Box Beauty, and I specialize in the beauty industry, specifically hair. I'm about to go into skincare, and um, this is something that has been a passion of mine forever. Never today would I have thought that this would be where I would be. So um, I'm happy to enlighten everyone on my journey. Hopefully that I could um, get an opportunity to inspire people because um, the journey is not an easy one, but it is so very much worth it. But um, thank you again. All right, you said it, you said it amazingly. Jenny is not easy, but it's, <laughs> it's worth it. Yes, Denise, <laughs> tell me about yourself. Hi, good night, everybody. My name is Denise, and I am the founder and the CEO of Insta Comfort, living easy on your pocket, which is in the real estate and the hospitality sector. I'm also a recent graduate or in the field of advertising, marketing, and communications. But I'm here to speak to young ladies in, well, young ladies and gentlemen, but we're telling more to women empowerment concerning how you can move forward in entrepreneurship because I am by, I would say, naturally, I am a motivational speaker. So I look forward into encouraging other persons as opposed to the journey of being an entrepreneur. Like Natalie said, it's not easy, but it's definitely worth it. All right, great. So the audience should know, the audience needs to know that that these three women are empowered. These are three women who are here to share their experiences with you and to just explain in terms of their transformation and how they got to where they are right now. And of course, the idea is to empower another, another young lady. So of course, as I said, we're live on Instagram and we're gonna jump straight into the questions today. So the first question is, what inspires you to feel empowered? We want to know what really drives that empowerment that comes from within. Inspires me. So I would say my inspiration comes from the peace of God. I have no other way to start than to say that my inspiration, truth, and my empowerment is that 
peace that I feel within me, knowing that I can be who I am, I can accomplish. And if I speak to a mountain, I can tell a mountain to move. And if I can say, okay, I want to put them in the atmosphere and say, yes, I will receive favor. Yes, I am prosperous. That it can happen just so with the peace of God within myself and knowing that the power of my words can manifest into what I want to create. Amen to that. <laughs> yes, Natalie, what is what really inspires you? What gets you going? Oh boy, let me tell you something. I am so hard on myself, but um, it's actually in a really positive way because I am very much inspired by the need to always outdo myself and to always be better than the person that I was before. And um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory. Um, a lot of people don't know that, well, my closest friends don't know that I was actually bullied at school, um, in, between infant and primary school, actually. And um, it was something that happened because I always, well, I found myself to be a bit different. Um, I needed to pronounce every letter of the word. I needed to stand a certain way. I needed to, to speak a certain way. And you know, um, I, I just found compared to other people and other kids, I found myself to be different. But um, at, by then, well, I would say, let's say back then, it was actually something that I thought was negative, but in me growing and me trying to find myself and me learning certain attributes, my strengths, my weaknesses, I realized that it was actually a gift because perhaps I was not meant to be like everybody else and I was actually meant to stand out. So I put a lot of emphasis on outdoing myself. I am inspired by doing better and by, I'm inspired by people, people who came from the bottom, people who didn't have things done easy, have things done the easy way or they, they made their way. I would say that I'm inspired by that. I'm inspired by life because life is short, but it is absolutely beautiful and so worth living. I'm inspired by my goals. I'm inspired by achieving them. I'm inspired by music. I'm just inspired by love. Wow. That's some deep, deep intrinsic motivation right there. And, and that is beautiful. What about you, Jamie? Okay. Well, I mean, I think the ladies, the ladies um, spoke to two things that are very important to me. The first, um, I believe Natalie was who spoke to creativity or manifesting, right? So that's an important fact. For me as an entrepreneur, I believe that an entrepreneur is somewhat different to a business person you know, of, of a different kind. There are business people, there are financiers, etc. But as an entrepreneur and as a multi-passionate entrepreneur at that, um, I think number one, I'm inspired by creating. I, I look at myself as a, a creative. Um, I see a space or a hole in an industry and there's something that drives me to follow through, to fill in the lines, you know, in a way that I would like to see the problem solved. So that is very, I mean, that empowers me, I suppose, and inspires me. Um, and the second, the second would be, you know, the last point made about um, authenticity, knowing yourself, you know. Um, so I, I feel empowered by creating in a way that's authentic and resonates deeply with me. I think that's what inspires me. As I said, it was, it's really intrinsic. And in you identifying the things that are within you that can motivate you and looking at your experiences and understanding that whatever happened in the past that it does not necessarily define who I am and it's only going to transform me and make me a better person. So that is indeed beautiful and the three of you is going to continue inspiring a lot of other young ladies. So that is amazing. So we move on to the second question where we really want to look at the professional inspiration of other women. Um, so I know a lot of you spoke about, you know, you and like, your personal experiences kind of uh empowering yourself but is there anyone you would say uh any woman that you looked up to that really motivated you or inspired you and you not necessarily wanting to be like them um but they just inspire you in a way that we hope you will inspire others yes yeah, sorry so we'll go with jamie for this first question well, it's very difficult to choose just one, to be quite honest. Um, throughout my life, women have inspired me, um, starting with my mother, of course, my closest friends, my, you know, even people I don't know or people I may have clashed with have inspired me in some way because I've learned something from the interaction. 
years was the prime minister and stood amongst men, you know, in, a, in an industry, in a, in a sector that was a pretty tough at that time. And so she always stands out as a, a role model to me. Um, someone in a more practical sense, um, when I got, first got started in this industry, of lifestyle migration. I saw, I worked with a Russian lady who was a tough cookie. She no longer is with us, but, um, and maybe not all of her, her manners resonated with me, but there were some very important little useful tools I learned from her in negotiation. I remember sitting with a client once and um, we were interviewing the client. The client came in with his mother and we were on. She was very quiet throughout my boss and, and she let me do the speaking with the client. She was very quiet. And at the end, when, when, when she spoke, she spoke directly to the mother because she understood that the mother was the decision maker in the room. So she really taught me about taking the time to ease back, listen, you know, understand the energies at play and, and use that in negotiation. And I think that, that has been a skill that has lasted with me throughout my career. That's good. And to make a point, but I want to make that point when everyone's there. I want to hear about the, the inspirational women. So yes, Denise, who, who inspired you? <laughs> that, that was a question I took a lot of thought into because I mean, you have, like Jamie said, you have ladies who inspire you in different aspects of your life. And being around, I mean, one of my friends, she's right here on, you know, the interview first, that's Natalie. <laughs> However, <laughs> <laughs> However, the person that I would go with would be Cheryl Francis. And on a professional basis, that she's a diplomat, right? She's a consulate general of St. Lucia in Toronto. And the reason why I chose her is because I like to interact with people on a one on one basis. And I mean, you could get inspiration from women all over YouTube and all over. But I like to have that one on one experience with a lady where you actually see her action matches her words. And it brings up a balance. And she said something to me that really stood out because, I mean, she has been my boss when I used to work at Flo. Then when I went to Toronto, I met again. So we had a one-on-one. -on -one. We, we got time to understand each other. And just from an outside perspective, seeing certain battles that she went through and her level of resilience, it spoke a lot to me because I trust people's actions, not always their words. But her actions spoke volumes to me. And also there was something that she left with me. She said to me, Denise, today I can be your boss, but tomorrow you might be my boss. You never know in life where you will end up. And I found that that was so humble of a diplomat to actually say that to somebody that's just going to school and just let me know that, you know what, in life you never know where you're going to end up. And for me, that really it placed a mark on my heart when she said that to me. I love her. I admire this lady. And she's an inspiration to many persons that will come across her. That's beautiful. Uh, and Natalie, did it inspire right. you? <laughs> I think the ladies mentioned, um, you know, in life we cross paths with uh, many people, with many women. And I would say that I've been inspired in many different ways by um, many different women. But um, the person I'm about to talk about is somebody who I have never met and I will never get an opportunity to meet in life. But I have followed this woman's story. I've read um, do documentaries, I've listened to documentaries, I've read articles and um, her story was one which was so powerful and I admire her bravery and her presence, her strength. And um, she is actually the late Margaret Thatcher. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of her, but she is the former prime minister of England. She reigned between 1979 to 1990. And this is a woman who stood amongst men as well. And she, oh, let me tell you a little bit more about this woman. She knew what she was about. She was strong-minded. When she would make a decision, that would be that. As a matter of fact, um, the queen was actually intimidated by her because she was had such a strong presence. And she, she I would not say, because intimidation is, is not a really good thing, but it just goes to show that as a woman, when you tap into your strengths, when you tap, tap into your true being, you can become something very, very powerful. And you know, we have a tendency to be submissive. She was one who was um, not submissive at, at 
Oh, she wasn't, she wasn't submissive. She was just a woman. She was strength. She was powerful. She had the, the ability to make decisions. She had the ability. To, I was also bullied and I suffered from depression. And with my backstory, when I see women like that, that powerful, it gives me hope. It does make me believe that I could be like that one day. Well, well, I would like to believe that I am going there <laughs> or getting there. But um, yeah, Margaret Thatcher. That's beautiful. So uh, for some of you, you were able to, to interact with your, your mentors of some sort. And I could say that female mentors is something I think, well, mentorship generally, I think in our culture is something that is lacking. And to be able to have uh, that individual that, that you could really grab onto and just learn something from, even if that person isn't really, you know, in, in, in front of you in Natalie's case, but someone that you could actually look up to. I think it's very important for, for us women to really understand that we don't really have to be competing with each other, at least not all the time, <laughs> and that we, there is something to learn from each other. So uh, I, your, your responses really resonate with me in terms of that. Um, so now let's speak about transformation. Let's, you know, the saying, don't look back because you're not going there. I don't want you to look back. I just want you to think about that point and just speak about that particular point in your life that really allowed for that transformation to occur. So was there that, that, that awakening for you? Did, did that happen? And if so, how was it? What was it? If you'd like to share. So let's start with Jamie. What was that transformation moment in your life? Again, I can't really say, um, Steffi, that there was just one point of transformation. Um, I've, had, I've had several, and I continue to have um, periods of transformation. I do recall, I mean, at the age of 30, I totally changed my career. I was a behavior analyst, and I had already accomplished quite a bit in my, in my last career. Um, and I, I had to take a chance and um, switch careers for my own mental health. Um, and so that was a point of, of transformation formation for me personally and business wise because I had to listen to the call of my my body, my mind, and make a decision that was that was right for me. Even if I had a lot of people who, who may have been disappointed and you know and, and wanted to see me carry on in that particular role, I had to to be brave and walk my path. And I'm I ha I'm happy I did. I've never regretted it. Um, as a matter of fact, it's come back full circle that I've been able to marry the two careers very effectively that I can do both, you know. Um, but I, I mean, I've also been through Hurricane Maria in Dominica. I am both Dominican and St. Lucian, by the way. Um, you know, my dad was born in St. Lucia and my mom was born in Dominica. And I was in Dominica during Hurricane Maria. As a matter of fact, I had started, I had gone out on my own. I'd left uh, the Russian lady that I was working with and... You know, I had started off on my own, my own adventure, and I had signed my first major client maybe a week before Maria. I had gone to Puerto Rico, and th th their team met with me in Puerto Rico. We signed our deal, and I got back to, to Dominica, and I'm all excited. My office is going up, so everything I've earned so far, I've been scrunting and putting it towards that, and the walls were going up, and I remember, you know, it was a cute little wooden office space and i took out when the storm started none of us expected that it was going to be you know the kind of storm because everything was destroyed you know i almost lost my life um, as a matter of fact there was a point during the night when my my roof had gone and, and i had to run outside with 200 mile per hour wind and galvanized flying in the air and i had to find safe harbor in a little you know shack that I sat on top of the washing machine there and, and accepted that my life was over. I really did. Mm. And, you know, this has it has changed my life in 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 showing me, you know, the importance of resilience, personal resilience, and business resilience, planning for resilience. It's very, very important. I mean, we don't walk around with a dark cloud on top of our heads, but Definitely, you know, diversify your income streams. That you know, ensure that you have your your eggs in different baskets. I mean, it was one of the reasons it motivated me to to not only stick to one country, and I think that's very important for entrepreneurs in the Caribbean, in the Eastern Caribbean, is to not be stifled to one island, but to really start to think 
think of us as a group of islands. It's very important, if you ask me, um, for survival. And sure enough, St. Lucia offered me survival. That's what it was, you know. I, I, I just happened to be to be in Roseau and, and jump ship off to St. Lucia so I could get on the internet and get in touch with my client and, and take it from there. And I'll tell you that that is a lesson that I will carry with me throughout. I get goosebumps just talking about it, you know. So so resilience, yes, that's what it taught me. So some key moments of transformation for me. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow indeed. Um I'm happy to see that you, you well you still here first today, so I'm happy for that. And yes, so resilience is, is definitely the word to describe that particular transformation. Um it's almost as if you know you don't you don't have any choice and you just have to kind of do what you need to do to make whatever your dream is happen. And you know, in that moment some persons would say, Maybe I need to give up, but then when you're passionate, then I mean that is a lesson that everyone, not just women, I think everyone would have to do from that. So thank you for sharing that story with us. Um, what about you, Natalie? What is that point of transformation or points of transformation for you? Oh, I, I had quite a few transformations, you know. Um, I think one of my major transformations came from me stepping out of my comfort zone. Um, I figured out in life, if I were to reach my true potential and if I were to conquer all the goals and achieve all the goals that, that's goals that I set out for myself that I needed to do something a bit different. So um, I was a really shy girl. I mean, some people may not be able to tell, but I, I, am, I am shy and it's something that I'm still battling with. So I put myself in situations where I would Perhaps I did the Carnival Queen thing. I did Carnival Queen in 2014, I believe. That was something that I never thought that I would ever be able to do. But it was also part of my journey to discovering myself and to pushing myself to the limits. And um, like I mentioned, I had so many other transformation moments, but that was a major one for myself. Um, going on job interviews, applying for jobs that I probably never felt deep down inside that I was able to that I was doing the beauty industry but I was just absolutely frightened and my first set of products without knowing anything about it per se really did not make the mark and I got quite a few of those products because here I am thinking like oh my god I saw this on the internet it looks nice on a picture maybe it's gonna be good let me get it here and sell it to clients and but not until my clients literally started to use those products <laughs> and um, I started to get feedback then I realized like oh my gosh I really sh um, shot myself in the foot and um, I I fell, I fell hard because it was a big investment for me, for me at the time, somebody might, somebody else might not consider it to be a big investment, but for me at the time, it was a big investment. So I literally had to recondition my mind and the way that I dealt with um, criticism and the way that I dealt with failure because um, it indeed was not a failure because um, with every lesson or with every failure, they say there's something that you learn from it. So um, I learned that it was important for me to pay close attention to my products, get some more feedback, do some more product research. I um, used my customer service skills to win some of my clients back. Some of them I, I lost, but some of them they, they understood. And I mean, give and take, that's life. Something I started to test products on myself. I would test it for a period of months. And then I would um, probably then um, transition back into sales and whatnot. But um, I remember what it felt like being at the bottom. And can you imagine suffering from depression and stress and being so shy to finally take that leap in business for you to fall flat? But let me tell you something. Eh? When you see I got up, I developed one broad back. I had broad shoulders. I'm in a position today where I feel that I could take on anything that is thrown my way. And even if I feel scared, even if I feel a little bit frightened, I'm going to take up the challenge because guess what? That's what life is about. Life is about challenging yourself. And you never know what your true potential is going to, to be until you, you take that leap of faith and until you try. So um, for me, I remained humbled. I um, did my research and um i was able to to overcome that so these are my well some of my transitions i mean it would take me the entire night or maybe a few weeks 
to, to really go into everything that, that happened during my transition phase. But these were two that really stood out to me. Wow. It's like when, you, when you're at the bottom, where else do you go? <laughs> exactly. Like you know, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So what about you, Denise? Hmm. I think if I have to go into transformation, just like that, Ali said, <laughs> it would actually it would take you you know a few weeks to go into that. But what I would say, I would let's just I'm not going to just dive into business because before getting into business, there was a process that I needed to go through, which what else? But for myself, because I went through some stuff that caused me to be very, I would say, bitter. And I didn't want that. And I wanted more out of life. Like everybody would have seen me as, you know, Denise is being so dramatic. Denise is being this person. But when the doors are closed, who is Denise? What is Denise feeling? Who is really Denise? So I was like, I needed to get to that point where I needed to understand that there is more out of me than just what people are seeing. So I had to do the deep work. I had to decide, okay, I need to get my spiritual life as my foundation and as my base before I can do anything. Because before I knew about business, all this was concerned about is that her heart is at peace. She understands forgiveness. She understands love. She understands happiness. She understands what's endurance. She understands that nothing just happens and everything happens for a reason. So there was a transformation within my mind that needed to take place before I went into anything. Now, the fact that I'm built on a spiritual basis, I am able to dive in and say, okay, God, what's my next step? So I went to school. When I went to school on my third year, I felt like, you know, I'm doing marketing because I... I used to do marketing with Natalie, right? We have a relationship where I do marketing for her. So in that time, I was like, okay, God, I love marketing, but there is something inside of me saying that there is more to life than just marketing. Now, as much as I know there is something more, I did not know what it was. But I am, I left, I, I'd love to stick to my comfort zone of just understanding marketing because marketing is what I do. I love to talk. I love to socialize. Yes, give me the brand. I will explain the brand. I will confront your fears and just take that leap of faith and just jump. I literally have to just jump. And that was the turning for me. So I was like, okay, I have to transition from, it's not just about marketing, but there is the financial aspect. There is the spiritual aspect. Because I'm making business, you need to make sure that you are well balanced. You need to ensure that you're not just losing yourself in this thing. And it can get very, very overwhelming. So I have to take time to process. Because sometimes I used to have headaches. I'm like, okay, I want this thing to go this way. I want this thing that way. But I have to understand that things will make mistakes. You will have to learn. You will have to fall down and pick up yourself. You know, and but what I, what I love about it is that I have people around me that will you know that are already cooked in the game like Natalie, yes. <laughs> so she's able to tell me that just work on the girl, you can do it, right? So I had to process myself because it's, as much as she could tell me Denise, you could do it, I had to see myself in that sort of form that I can do it for myself. So I had to transform my mind before I could have transformed any aspect of what my business looks like and how my business is going to flourish. So for me, the transformation aspect was within my mind first because whatever is in my mind is whatever I'll put out there. So I would say everything that I have been today has all summed up to the transitions and the transformation within my mind of who I am today. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, round of applause for all of you. And, and that is amazing. Um, so being able to transform based on your, your mental state or being able to just uh, understand you intrinsically and just knowing that there's more to life than me or, or maybe going for something dramatic. Uh, but something led you to where you are today. And now I want you to share. Share with a young lady who may be listening today a young lady who is ambitious and wants to get into a particular industry, wants to get into a particular field, and that young lady wants to be an entrepreneur, what would you tell them or what would you want them to know to be able to succeed or to be able to just move past whatever that transformation is that they may be in? What would you want that young female entrepreneur to know? I will. And, and I don't speak generally about either men or women because. You know, everyone is different and unique unto themselves. But certainly, 
um, we can say that it can be a bit intimidating for women to, to encounter um, male-dominated industries. Uh, and something that has helped me um, enter a male-dominated industry um, and, and to be quite well at it is, and this is a piece of advice I got from a man, in fact, and so that's why I say I don't speak generally. Um, he is an industry leader in his country, and he was just disclosing to me once in a, in a very casual talk. Um, he said to me, you know, I'm not, a, I don't, you know, everybody asks for the business plans and so on, and I do the business plans, and he's gonna, I think he's ranked number one in this country, and he says, I, I, I look at the numbers and everything, but you know, I, I operate my business a lot by intuition, you know? And that struck me because what it did, it, it, it um, allowed me to, to feel confident that in fact, operating via intuition is valuable. It's very valuable. And I say that because it's often discounted, one. And two, because as women, we tend to be very intuitive. We are empaths because we're caretakers. So we have that natural feeling for others and we have a natural sixth sense. They say the woman's intuition, you know? And it, instead of looking at it as a weakness, which is what I looked at it as for many years, I felt anxious and I, I wanted to, to create that. Into, what I did instead was to change my relationship with, with my intuition and therefore the anxiety could be relieved to some degree, because what I started to do was to trust my intuition. You know, definitely don't ignore the data, don't ignore the research, but still your mind and listen to your intuition. Find that compass in your in your soul and follow it because it's very, very valuable. And that is what I would like to impart to any young lady um, in business. I couldn't agree more. We have that power. Women are just naturally powerful. So just, you, we have that good feeling and sometimes we question it, but come on, you got this. <laughs> yes, Denise, you clap in. What about you? Speak, speak to the young lady. <laughs> no, because what she said was powerful, so that's why I was clapping. Thank you yes. for that, Jenny. But if I have to encourage any woman I will encourage you on the word of God because the word of God never lies and it always stands, right? So I always encourage women with a daily scripture. So my scripture will be from Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you because it's all about your passion. It's all about your character because it builds you. There are things that you are going to face on that journey and it will come to test you. There are giants that will come to scare you. There are competitors that will come to really test your tenacity in this market because in any market you go, whether it's beauty, whether it's law, whether it's real estate, every market has giants. But it's how you're going to face those giants. Your character needs to be built on this journey. And I would encourage every woman that even when bad things happen to you, just know that it will work out for your good. When good things happen to you, it will also work out in your favor because everything works for you because the plans of God is to prosper you and to give you that expected end. So take that leap of faith and jump. But understand that character must be built on this journey because your character is what's going to shape you and it's what's going to keep you. It's not about the end product of money or anything of that sort because if you're going behind money, it will not sustain you. But your passion is what is going to keep you going over and over and you will get to where you need to be. Beautifully said. It, it is indeed a journey of passion. It is indeed a journey of tenacity. A, a journey where you, it may be tedious at times. I mean, I speak to entrepreneurs all the time and I, and I tell them that this journey is not an easy one. And you cannot just be driven by the fact that I'm going to be making a million dollars in a year. And what, what is really driving that achievement? Just the thought. Women are very powerful. And as Jamie said, we are empaths. We are understanding. We are compassionate. And these are gifts that are embedded deep within us. And it's very, very easy for us to get caught up in being equal to a man. And women get in um, the same privileges as a man. And, and, and I'm not trying to stray away too much from, from the topic at hand, but... Um, 
I get it. I get it. We have been suppressed for quite some time. We have been forced into submission. There's the history behind what women have gone through. But I do not want us to shy away from our gifts. These are the gifts that are needed to complement a man. We need women in business to elevate to the next level. And um, as much as we do want to be in charge, and being in charge feels good, and being able to, to be the head and run things, it, it gives you that sense of achievement and power. We also need to, to remember what we have deep within us, which makes us different. Women need men just as much as men need women. So that is actually uh, one of the things that I would like to highlight. Perhaps something else I would like to highlight would perhaps be... Hmm. Write down your, all your ideas. Even though you do not have a strategic plan in place, it's important for you to plant a seed. And Denise, um, I thank you for that one because going way pivot, or maybe you think that you may be able to achieve it years from now, write it down. It's very important for you to, to, to set that mark. And um, don't ever, ever doubt going into something because you think that you know it, it, it's already flooded in the market. Honey, there's an opportunity for you to flourish if you're passionate about anything. And um, I will use myself as an example because before I went into beauty, that was one of the things that I that I did say. That I did say. Um, so many people are doing that, Natalie. Why do you want to go into this? I wanted to go into it because I liked it. I loved it. I was passionate about it, and I felt that I would be able to bring something a little bit different to the market. So I stuck to it. So don't think about the competition. Just have that tunnel vision. You know what the main goal is. You know where you want to be. You know where you're going. You don't necessarily have to pay attention to what's happening around you. I mean, for marketing purposes, yeah, you probably need to know what your competitors are doing. But set a goal and focus on that. And eventually, you're going to get to that point. So... um. Take care of yourself, like Denise said. Become spiritually grounded because when everything else fails and when even man fails you, we need to go back to him. When we cannot get the strength from the people around us or the people that we expect to be there for us, for some reason cannot do it today. And this is when we really do need them to have our back. Listen, he, God, the supreme being, will always have our back. So I always stress on becoming spiritually grounded because um, this is actually the main something else. Um, learn to take constructive criticism. So as women, take ourselves out of a scenario. I should say take our feelings out of a scenario. As much as it may appear to be destructive, there is something positive to learn from it. And it, it has a lot, success has a lot to do with our mindset and the way that we view things. All criticism is good criticism. There is always something to learn from anybody around you, whether it be the CEO of a company or the housekeeper or the, or the garbage man. I always um, keep an open mind. I, I, I don't judge people. I, um, I love people, as a matter of fact, and I believe that I could learn anything from anybody around me. As a matter of fact, I recently learned something from a three-year-old. And I had to be asking myself, like, my, I don't remember being that smart when I was that age. But yeah, being spiritually grounded is key, making sure that you write down your points, um, being open to cons um, constructive criticism, um, writing down your dreams, not being, being afraid to take, take that leap because you think that you will, you will fail. And so what? I don't, I don't believe that anybody fails. I believe we either win or we learn. Trial and error. You ended that so powerfully, I didn't realize you ended. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that, that was an amazing point. I think my, my biggest takeaways from, from what you all said, uh, I also you speak about understanding that you're a woman and understanding your differences, uh, especially, you know, compared to the men and really observing this, these differences and looking at them as advantages as compared to disadvantage of being a woman. Um, I also heard a lot about faith. I heard a lot about um, just being able to learn from, from other individuals around you. So I hope that the, the young ladies' perspective 
what what do you think can be done to really accommodate or to really grow the networks of, of women? I think I mentioned earlier that mentorship and women really working together, it's not something that you see very often. Uh, you see it here and there, but I feel like there's a more of a, a, a battle of women and women wanting to be uh, at the top of any industry or at the top of, you know, just being able to be the one that has succeeded. And I just want to know from you, in terms of just your thoughts, how do you think women could really network better? How do you think Boost can assist in, in, in that really happening, the webinar series? What do you what do you really see coming out of this? So I'll I'll start with Jamie and we'll go to Denise and then Natalie. So yes, Jamie. Okay. Um that was really lovely. Um Denise and Natalie, I really enjoyed listening to you speak um about you know how you would you would assist others. I thought that was really, really lovely and powerful. Um in terms of networks, if I understood the question correctly, I mean I really I'm, I think I'm hearing inclusive, and so how can you include all women entrepreneurs? I believe that was the, the question. Um, and so when I when I think inclusive, I right away start to think of well, what are the barriers? Because then those are what we need to knock down. So what are the barriers to including more women and um, all women? And I think when we start business, most of us are afraid or intimidated. You know, it takes that 28 seconds of bravery. And so that, that is a serious barrier um, to networking because I'll tell you something. We, human beings, we, we accomplish and it's great. We celebrate our accomplishments, but sometimes we use our accomplishments as a status symbol and a way to separate ourselves from others. And um, nothing could be more harmful than that in building networks because you really want to, to, to include others and to, to help others you not only have to demonstrate how, you know, or let them see their story in you, but you must and should see your story in them. Allow them to share from a very early on, you know, at a very early stage of the internet. It comes with its, its downsides, but it comes with some really great things. And intimidation, you know, we speak about mentors, and I don't think this is exclusive to women. It's very important for women because we have less examples out there, perhaps. But that is changing. That is changing dramatically. Um, mentorship. I was having this discussion with a friend maybe about a week and a half ago, in fact. And, and you know, when you're at the top of any industry, when you start to become successful, like Natalie said, you, you do things a bit different than the other person because that is how you gain success. It's by swimming in the blue ocean, not the bloody red ocean full of competition, right? So you swim in the blue ocean. And, and when you're swimming in the blue ocean as an entrepreneur, as a creative, when you're creating a new piece of poetry or a new piece of artwork or a new strategy in business, there oftentimes aren't people to show the way because they've never been there. So you can't really rely on one person to be a mentor. You have to, you have to look at what you're doing and try to find several examples, one person doing this part, one person doing that part, because now you're going to com combine all of that and that is going to sort of lead the way but really you are leading the way this is helping you to lead the way you know this is being resourceful um and so finding mentorship in, in different avenues and i think that's how boost can continue to assist is by allowing or providing access to in a non-intimidating way that online where people can easily access um resources tools that can mentor them persons from various backgrounds and i think in that direction um, you know, it, you will succeed. You will just continue to grow and grow and, and to help as many people. So that's my little tidbit. Mm -hmm. right, thank, thank you. you. Yes, Denise. That was beautifully said, Jamie. I think that you covered a lot of things that I would have probably said, but I'm just going to add a little bit to her point, but that was really beautifully and profoundly said. And one of the things I would add is that, you know, just adding workshops, having workshops, the implementations of workshops where, if for instance, let's say, you get to that vibration of where they want to be. So some people may sit here right now and say, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to go in that business, but I'm afraid, I'm afraid. And maybe they might have people around them that are not as encouraging as maybe what we're seeing right now. So having the implementation of different workshops where you have mentorship, so persons like myself who are, or 
I'm pretty new in the market that can say, okay, I've started here. So they can understand from one to six months. Then you understand from six to four years, you have Natalie coming to explain something else that they can understand. Because as you go along, you have to learn from different persons, right? And then maybe a more of an advanced stage, you can have maybe Jamie as a as maybe you know a mentor because as you go along you'll get to meet different people so having platforms like what you are doing right now is a really good thing so i think that is something that you can continue to do but the implementation of workshops where you could have ladies to volunteer their time and their experiences and different things we can learn because it's not only about solving a problem in business but also your personal life in terms of personal relationships spiritual being balanced in life it has a lot to do with it so having that sense of balance where women can understand their value as a woman which Natalie pointed out in a lot of her points and understanding how you can you know grow up the ladder come up the corporate ladder as well as being balanced in every area of your life it would really help and cover situation and make, make, make the place a better place <laughs> yes indeed uh, so what about you Natalie Wow, what else is left to say? JB and Denise said it all. <laughs> but um, perhaps I could add on by perhaps suggesting that um, women need to be open to the idea of support groups and the idea of giving and receiving support. And um, it could start as small as a group of friends or a group of workers who want to go into maybe do a little side hustle, they would say, and they're looking to empower other women who are looking to, you know, um, expand in business, especially due to what's happening with COVID and the impact that it's had on the industry, that um, support groups are, are just a little... It gives you that little that little sense of hope. It gives you that little oomph that you need to do something when you know that there are uh, where women of business can come together to to showcase their products or showcase their talents and create an opportunity where we could perhaps do an exchange or a collaboration where we could we could work together. For example, I mean, so hey, I might. Um, go to a business seminar where I realized there's a fitness instructor. Perhaps I could incorporate beauty and fitness into something and then we go ahead and network from there. So um, the networking aspect, which both of both Jamie and Denise um, touched on, is, is quite important. So um, that's my point, just to elaborate a little bit more on what they suggested. So maybe you can organize that, Boost. Yeah, maybe Boost can organize that, yeah. <laughs> yes indeed uh so all your points are really well taken um so i'm i'm hearing a lot of you know women really checking for women to be honest um and i, I think that is that is extremely important that even you and growing up in you be, becoming established um and even just more uh developed in whatever field that you're in um that you recognize that there are people behind you and you recognize that there are young people looking up to you, especially young women. And of course, some fields may be a lot more male dominated than others. And when you become a giant in that male dominated field that you understand that there are other young women coming up that ladder and you know, going through the struggle that you went through and you could possibly do something you could motivate them to allow them to have a, a better experience than you did and you know providing that like these words of inspiration could always help them um so thank you thank you thank you i'm not sure if boost has any questions from uh any of the uh persons on the call right now or any from instagram i'm not sure if you have any questions we could take a few questions uh, for now. And while we wait for the questions, I just want to say again, thank you to the panelists for being here with us today. And thank you to our sponsors for making this possible. And if we have no questions, of course, we can just go into the closing remarks and uh, just tell me, yes, your biggest takeaway, um, this closing remarks, what any words of inspiration that you'd like to live with another young lady uh, just 
anything that you would want to see. So it starts with Natalie and then we'll go to Denise and Jamie. Yes, Natalie. Never give up, never doubt yourself. Um, I live by this quote, ambition is the path to success and persistence is the vehicle that you arrive in. So if you believe in something, you keep at it, you work at it and you focus on that. You pay less attention to what's happening around you and you pay a closer attention to, to where you're going and what your goal is. So um, anything that you wanna do, nothing beats a try, just go ahead and do it. As I said earlier, you, e you either win or you learn. Excellent. Yes, Denise. What about you? Take away. Okay, so I will say chin up to this young lady and know that you can accomplish anything and understand that faith at the end, at the bottom of it all is faith that what matters and believing in yourself and it is not what others think about you, but it's what you think about yourself and the things that you speak about yourself is what's going to propel you. And something that I always say to every single person that I come across for motivation is that it's not where you have been. It is who you are becoming because where you have been is the past and it is part of your journey to allow you to become that woman that God has created you to be, to become, sorry. You are blessed and you are you have purpose. And you know, I really enjoy it. So I just want to reiterate that. Um, my closing remarks would be, if, if life has taught me anything, it's to um, embrace your authenticity. Um, you know, the, the closer you can align with your authentic um, self, in your offerings, in what you do daily, um, that's when you're going to see success, you know? And authenticity comes with vulnerability because none of us have perfect lives. You know, we're not all this made up glamour in front of the thing. I mean, we have real problems, real flaws. We are all human beings, so be gentle with yourself and vulnerable because being vulnerable means you're honest you can be trusted you can be trusted by your clientele you can empower others because they too see themselves in your vulnerability and when you're authentic then you're doing what you love and you will put you will put the passion in it so that's what i would like to leave you all with and thank you again Indeed, and thank you. So again, thank you to our panelists. So thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Natalie. And thank you, Denise. Thank you for joining us today and sharing your experiences and your words of inspiration. So anyone still on the call with us, I want you to go ahead and follow these ladies on Instagram, follow their endeavors and share and like and just encourage another woman to encourage another woman to encourage another woman. So thank you for joining us tonight. Again, this was the fourth series uh, of the webinar uh, series well, <laughs> hosted by Boost Investing Michelle. We spoke about empowerment, we spoke about transformation, we spoke about experiences. And again, we will continue on empowering other women. And I look forward to seeing the three of you. Natalie is gone, but <laughs> I wish you could still hear me somewhere. Uh, that you know you achieve everything that you want to achieve get where you want to go in life and you do even more. So thank you for being on this call with me tonight. It was a pleasure listening and learning so much more about, about you guys. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you blossom. <laughs>